Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. As newborn babes, alleluia, desire ye the sincere milk of the word, alleluia, alleluia.
through the merits of the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, remember before thee thy servants, Philip and William, we pray thee, having opened them the gates of larger life, thou wilt receive them more and more into thy joyful service. That they may win with thee and thy servants everywhere the eternal victory, through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth the reigns with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit ever, one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the first letter of St. John, beginning with the fourth verse. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear witness, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. And he that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself, that he believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not in the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God giveth, hath given to us, eternal life, and the life of it is his Son. And he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And here in the epistle. Thanks be to God. I believe in one God, 
Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and of one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God, very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was the garden of the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us and upon his body, he suffered and buried, and third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended to heaven, and stood on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together of his worship and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism of the formation of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, happy Low Sunday. Uh, no Sunday should be low, though. Every Sunday is a little Easter. Yeah. Do have a vestry meeting today after social hour. And note the Wednesday Mass at noon will be St. Justin the Martyr. And again, I'm sure you all know by now, Bishop Strawn and his wife and that will be here uh, next Sunday. And he's going to confirm a couple of people, and uh, Gary and Elijah. And he's going to do something else. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and I'm sure when you all follow the news, uh, we lost Prince Philip during the week. And uh, that was, he was great for just now. And now he really had quite a life, quite a man, and uh, part of England, part of our heritage, of course, so that's the way it is. Sermon him is eighty six. <laughs>
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Following the death of our Lord, the disciples, terrified of the Jews, disillusioned, sorrowful, cowered in the upper room, arguably the same upper room where the Paschal Mysteries had been instituted shortly before. And they brooded. They brooded over the loss of their master. And as they brooded over the loss of their champion and friend, well, suddenly, there he was. There he was, in the midst of them, in his glorified body. Peace be unto you, he said. And who could say this with greater authority? He showed them his hands and his side. This is quite significant. He wasn't so much saying, well, look what they did to me, as he was saying that these wounds would be a lasting impression that through these marks would come their salvation and our own. John the Revelator tells us of the marks of the Lamb having been slain. So this is for eternity. Disciples were glad, surely an understatement. Well, they were ecstatic. This was the risen Christ, the one who had been crucified on a criminal's cross who appeared to have lost the battle, who was simply dead. Dead. Not so fast. Christ did promise that he would rebuild the temple himself, which is himself, in three days. And so he did. The disciples, of course, could not have been convinced of this fully until now. Sometimes seeing is believing. They had this experience in the flesh. We have this experience through faith. Yet the Jesus of history and the Christ of experience are the same. To the risen Christ, the church owed her beginning. To the eternal Christ, she owes her continued existence. And the resurrection is even more than the greatest event in human history. It is a reality a reality which manifests itself again and again in our lives, in the life of the church. As we, like the mythical phoenix, rise from our own ashes, take up our cross again, and press on. The cross does not now go away. It will never go away. Because the cross is the very consciousness of the church. Always, always. Even on Easter, we should keep the cross close to us, as each of us bears our own cross in our own way. Always, always, there will be new sins which must be atoned for. Always, always, the souls in paradise will need our prayers as we need theirs. And so the church, in obedience to a master's command, offers up the holy sacrifice of Calvary in an unbloody manner, and joins with our Lord, who is constantly pleading his sacrifice before the Heavenly Father. The body of Christ has passed from death into glory. We feed not on the dead Christ, we feed on the risen Christ. The disciples, with the risen Lord now in their midst, received a new commission from him. As the Father has sent me, even so, send I you. There will be victories, but there will be defeats. There will be joy, but there will be sorrow. And some would even be crucified. And so it is with us. Ella Wheeler Wilcox puts it this way in her poem, Resurrection. <clears throat> Pausing a moment ere the day was done, while yet the earth was scintling with light, I backward glance from valley plain and height. At intervals where my life path, had, life path had run, rose cross on cross, and nailed upon each one was my dead self. 
You got that gruesome sight, that sudden splendor to the falling night, showing the conquest that my soul had won. Up to the rising stars I looked and cried, there is no death, for year on year, reborn, I wait to larger life, to join more great. So many times have I been crucified, so often seen the resurrection morn. I go triumphant, though new calvaries wait. Amen. So now to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, described as most justly due, all might, majesty, power, glory, and dominion, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and said unto the women, He whom ye seek is risen, as he said unto 